As a lot of you probably know, woodworking is not my main gig. I'm a mortgage broker by profession. What I do in here really is my passionate hobby. Through making these videos, it actually helps fund a lot of the projects that you see on this channel. Historically, I have actually made a lot of commissions and I just got to a point where it was a trade off between time with my family and building projects for other people. So you can guess which I gave up. Now, Every once in a while, I do still take on a commission, but it either needs to be something that I know is gonna make a great video for this channel, or it's a large production order that I know I can trade off a higher dollar value for my per hour time. Over the holidays, I got an order for 80 charcuterie style cutting boards. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you the process that we go through when we're doing large orders in our small garage shop, but also show you the profitability of a project like this. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I actually break down exactly how much it costs us to do this project and what our profitability was for doing the 80 boards. Now this batch of boards worked out to be about 18 inches long and about 12 inches wide. Now I'm not trying to clickbait you by saying 100 boards when the order was only for 80 because there was actually 100 boards that we worked through. There was just some that were a little bit too small for the order, so we still produced them, but they just got set aside for another run. I've had a couple people ask me about this, but this is a Pika pencil with a white lead in it. I use this all the time for marking on walnut, just because it shows up so well when you're marking on a darker wood like walnut. So some lumber stores will call this craft walnut and <laughs> This particular batch had a lot of defects and rot, so it was a lot of cutting out some of the bad stuff just to make sure that I got enough boards for the run. As well, you'll notice as I'm cutting here, I'm adjusting my miter saw. I'm not trying to get everything at 90 degrees. I'm trying to line it up with the lines that I've marked out. I just find that it's a more natural looking board if you're not just cutting directly to a 90 degree line. As well, Take your time cutting through the material because there's a lot of tension in these boards and just slowly nibble away till you get all the way through your material. That way you're gonna have less chance of binding the blade. And just so you can get a sense of scale, this is about 50 boards roughed out and ready to move on to the next step. I've seen people stabilize bark in these kind of boards, but honestly, I really just don't feel that it's worth it in the long run. For having a quality product like this, you really need to remove the boards. As far as grading goes, we go through every single board to mark out any knot hole, imperfection, or anything that needs to be filled or stabilized. You'll see there I also have tuck tape because if it's something that flows all the way through the board, we want to make sure that we're blocking it off so when we're adding epoxy, it doesn't flow all the way through the board. And I'll say this small stack right here were the only ones that didn't need any extra filling. You'll also notice my daughter in the background in a lot of these shots. I'll talk about this more at the end, but she actually did work to help with this order. And of course we paid her for her time. This was an odd batch. And I, we had a couple boards that were like this, where it was just kind of frayed along the edges. If you know what causes this, uh, let me know in the comments below. I've actually never seen this at this scale on any of the craft walnut that we've bought in the past. This is just a carving disc that I'm using, followed up by a bit of sanding just to kind of fake that live edge and get rid of that roughness on each of the boards. If you want to check out this cuts all disc, I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look. This combined with the Marcus Sander really left an amazing finish on these, I guess, fake live edge pieces. Now debarking and fixing any of the edges is a little bit messy. So we usually wait until after that's completed before moving on to any of the filling with, uh, in my case, total boat high performance. This is a great epoxy as far as dry time, but as well as far as stability to be able to fill any of the imperfections in the wood. And one tip that I learned a little while ago was to actually use a little paintbrush just to be able to push any of the epoxy down into the cracks. It, it kind of coats the edges and makes sure that you have a good bond to the wood as well as it I find it actually pops a lot of the air bubbles along the way. Coming back the next day my epoxy was dry and we were able to start sanding and preparing for the next phases of building these boards. 
Now, if this is something you are planning on doing more as a business, I really do suggest looking at tools like drum sanders and some of the other specialty items that I featured in this video. This does make it faster. So this will increase your per hour value and profitability, but it does take time to, of course, save up to buy a lot of these tools. One of my best tips is do look used. This is actually a drum sander I bought from a local shop that I got for about a thousand dollars. And I'll tell you, it is a workhorse. At this point, all the boards are sanded up to roughly 120 grit, and we're able to go back and do some of the last minute fills, as well as uh, start the sanding process. For this project, I was actually able to borrow this, well, you can see glue gun basically from my local hardwood dealer. This is designed for not filling, and for a lot of the bigger holes, it works awesome, but you can see I'm also using CA glue to fill in the holes. These boards were sanded up to 320, and we did grain pop them with water in between each of the sanding cycles. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. When the cutting boards come to me, they will be in the raw form, all sanded up and ready for engraving. So as you can see, I've already done the engraving, then I will dip them into mineral oil, and then now we're at that final stage of sealing in that oil. We've used this in the past. It's a, a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax. It works really fantastic. And if you're looking for an add-on in your shop, this is great. We've sold it on our Etsy shop with success. The recipe for that is on our website mortgageandminer.com, check it out. However, time is money, when you're, especially when you're doing a really big batch of cutting boards. This would usually take me about two minutes per board to apply, and because it is quite thick, we are having to apply it, let it sit, and then you have to buff it off. So I'll apply it, stack them, and then wipe them all off. So there's a lot of time, effort, and energy that goes into using this. The finish is great, however, Total Boat sent us their new wood honey food safe wood finish. And so I wanted to compare and contrast between these two. I already did a little test of comparing between the two. The end product was the same. However, this took about 30 seconds to put on and buff off where this took two minutes. So when, again, when you're doing a big batch of 80 cutting boards, that's a lot of time spent for the same end goal. A little goes a long way, but we have a big surface area, so. Squeeze it on, rub it in. This board is one of my favorites that we've done. Always take care to apply attention to the edges. You want those to be nice and sealed and protected. Just so there's no confusion, historically we've done two different styles of boards. A style that will have a handle like this one, and then what the subject of this video is, which is more of a standard size charcuterie cutting board with uh, personalized engraving. Now breaking the cost down, we charged $75 per board for the client. This is 25% less than we would normally charge per board. And the reason we did this is just because they ordered 80 boards at one time. That worked out to $6,000 that the client paid for these boards. Now material cost and do not forget your disposables worked out to just around $2,000. So we made about $4,000 on this project. Now you can't just say that you made $4,000 on a project and call it quits there. You really have to know what your hourly rate is. And it took us 60 hours between my wife, my daughter and I to do these boards. So that worked out to about $67 per hour, kind of at our varying skill levels. My daughter, it actually worked out really well. She did a majority of the sanding and grain popping on the boards. And for her, the timing was perfect because she had just broken her iPhone and I mean, what better way to buy another iPhone than to help your dad with 80 charcuterie serving boards. So let me know if you have any other questions about this process, or if you have any other tips, feel free to comment below. If you like this style of video, let me know. I don't do a lot of commission work, like I said, but if this is the style of content that you find value in, let me know, and I'm happy to work on more stuff like this in the upcoming year. If you're following me on Instagram, you know I'm working on something pretty special for my own feed table.
Hey, if you want to check out some of the other videos that we've done, I've put some links here. We'll see you guys on the next project.